much better than the opposition he's fighting, and he leaves them hanging on. You know, when, when Arislan Ilar fought Canelo Alvarez a couple of years ago, uh, a lot of people thought that that was going to be a very risky fight for Canelo, and it was. Canelo was out of his league against Arislan Lara that night. Lara controlled that fight from round one to round 12. He outlanded Canelo. Canelo was hypnotized by what this guy was doing to him. But, and I've never seen this before in any other fight, Canelo is fighting the other guy's fight for 12 rounds. But God help me, Canelo deserved to win that fight because even though Canelo was not landing anything good, even though Canelo was totally flummoxed by this guy, Lara let him off the hook. Lara could have just easily gone after Canelo Alvarez, just showed a little bit of offense, tried to take the fight to Canelo, and he didn't. He had to settle for what many believe was a controversial decision, but I scored the fight 7-5 Alvarez, and I was in total disbelief that I scored it that way. Had Laura just decided to use offense, forget the, 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 the discipline, and be a little more reckless, he could have beaten Alvarez. And who knows what that could have done for him. But now we get to see Laura against the likes of Vanis Martrosian again. You know, when they fought three years ago, Laura was again very easily beating Martrosian. Uh, there was an, a headbutt. The fight was stopped, and it was a draw. A lot of people thought Lara won the fight. I did too. How it was a draw was beyond me, but that was another incident, uh, another instance, excuse me, of Lara kind of fighting to the level of his opponent. But this weekend, things have to change. If Eris Landy Lara is main eventing a card, he has to do what the main event fighters do. He has to entertain. And trust me, if people say that that's impossible, that's not in the style of fights, fighters like him cannot be entertaining, I don't believe you. Because tactical fighters do not have to be boring. But no, Whitaker was a boring fighter. And he, was, and he was one of the best tacticians in the past 30 years. years. Same with same Fred Benitez. A counterpuncher about your nature, and he was he was incredibly, incredibly entertaining. entertaining. He was he was a good scratch 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 his career. People may hate Floyd Mayweather, but Floyd Mayweather, but Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather does not does fight in any way, way shape, or form like Harrison Delar does. He fights far, far more entertaining, entertaining. by comparison. By comparison. Ivan Calderon was, was was a fighter, a fighter who was fighting in the very 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 lightweight classes. Even though he couldn't break an egg, he couldn't knock a glass of water off the table. He was so light, light-fisted, had to rely on his brains and his and his knowledge more than his brawn. He could scrap. He really could. Arislandi Lara and Guillermo Rigondeau are two fighters that are just too good for their own good, and they are too stubborn to understand what it means to fight on a professional level, despite their success thus far. Now that can all change. They have the opportunity. They have the resources. All they need to do is perform. There should be no reason why Eris Lenny Lara doesn't go up against Martirosian this weekend. He knows what Martirosian is going to bring, and he can drown him. He can beat Vanez up. I'm not saying that he will knock him out, but... Back then when they fought, it was so obvious that the fight was in Lara's hands. He outlanded Vanas practically 2-1 to one the entire fight, and he was beating him up. It was an ugly fight, and yeah, Vanas was trying to make a fight out of it. But Lara was the better man that night, despite the decision. There should be no reason why Lara pitter-pats his way to his decision here. If he wants to fight Gennady Golovkin or Daniel Jacobs, he needs to make that fight happen by demand of the public, not by just hoping his promoter will do him a solid. Guillermo Rigondeau, if he wants to get fights with Leo Santa Cruz, Carl Frampton, Scott Quigg, 
a rematch with Donaire, he's going to need to make the people want that fight. And he's not going to do that fighting the way he does. As good as they are, they can be better. Not from a skill point of view, from an entertainment point of view. And until then, hardcore fight fans can continue to appreciate the the art, just like people who love lawns can just appreciate watching the grass grow. But for the rest of us, there's nothing fun about this. If they are not going to do what they are supposed to do and entertain the public with all the skill that they have, and they do have that much skill to entertain us, then they shouldn't be given these main event cards. They shouldn't be taking the spotlight away from younger fighters who can entertain, who are just as dynamic and far more entertaining. Maybe it's not fair because if you believe in the merit system, then Lara should be getting a fight with the likes of Golovkin. And Guillermo Rigondeau should be number one pound for pound fighter in the world and everybody should be lining up to face him, but that's just not how the sport works. Skill takes a backseat to entertainment and the best fighters can even those out hand by hand. Mayweather was not the most entertaining fighter in the world, but he brought something to his game that made people want to watch him, a personality perhaps. Pernell Whitaker, maybe he was a very, he was a, a, one of the best defensive fighters ever, but when he had to turn it up, he'd turn it up. He would not have let a guy like Delvin Rodriguez go 12 rounds with him. And with the level of opponents Rigando has gone, he wouldn't allow that competition to pull his stock down and make him a liability in terms of a promoter standpoint. But that's the way the cookie crumbles here. Their fate is in their hands. And, and when it comes to fighters, that's, the, that's as true as it's ever been. Fighters have the fate in their own hands. Lara deserves better. So does Rigando. But deserves got nothing to do with it. Because if no one wants to see them fight, then nobody, they will fight. It's simple as that. Maybe this weekend, Eris and Lara will get the idea. Maybe later this year, when Guillermo Rigando faces off against Jamie McDonnell, maybe he'll get the idea. And maybe if they get the idea so good to the point where they become an entirely different kind of fighter, maybe the people will just be demanding to see them. And that will be a reversal of fortune that will be as unprecedented and unpredicted as anything in the sport. But for the time being, we'll just have to strap in and enjoy the ride, or rather not. Again, at least we have the Charlo brothers fighting this weekend. But if you stay around long enough, hopefully we get a show in the main event, and the tacticians, the stylists, the professors of the sport have their time to shine. I'm not going to hold my breath. Well, that'll about do it today for the box pod. Again, I'm your host, Danny Howard, and uh, great to have you on the air with me today. Uh, be sure to check me out at the Boxing Tribune at boxingtribune slash news.com. And you can check me out at Facebook or like me on Twitter at dbbox625. And we'll see you next week.